What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs got to eat. And today we're talking wide receivers. We're talking pass catchers. My top five late round wide receivers getting disrespected. Some of them aren't going that that late, but they're still still juicy, juicy values in the middle rounds. Seventh, eighth, ninth round and let they'll do rounds later is where they should not be going. You need to jump up and grab these guys based on pedigree, based on the statistics of last year, based on the opportunity at hand, okay? We did this video last week for running backs, so if you missed that, we'll link in the description. Make sure you go watch that first. And now we're moving on to the pass catchers. Not much more to say. So thank you for joining me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and if you enjoy what we've got spitting at your face hole today, first and foremost, we must tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. I want to start off real quick by saying I did not put Devonta Smith on this list, but he is quickly becoming my favorite mid-round, like 7th to 10th round wide receiver pick in drafts this year because the Philadelphia Eagles have nobody else catching passes. And my, my favorite stack in the world right now in underdog drafts, if you watched Monday's video, we did a full we did a full 18-round mock draft for fantasy football. Jalen Hurts in the 7th, Devonta Smith in the 8th, Dallas Goddard in the ninth. when one of you doesn't steal him from me. Beautiful stack. There's no one else catching passes in that offense, right? No more Alshon, no more Deshaun Jackson. They don't have another wide receiver behind Devonta Smith. He's going to lead the rookie class in targets this year. He's going to lead it, and he's going to be good. And he's going to be real fucking good. Look at the NFC East. Those are defenses that you want to play against. Philadelphia's defense is bad. Other teams are going to score points. The Giants, meh. Washington is very, very good. The Cowboys are going to score 68 points a game, and their defense is terrible. This is just, you want Devonta Smith, okay? You want Devonta Smith. He was not originally in this video, but I'm supplanting him as the number one guy going off the board in the seventh, eighth round. But let's talk about the other guys that were on this list, okay? First up, my man Robbie Anderson of the Carolina Panthers. Right now getting picked as wide receiver 32, 73rd off the board. Okay, he is probably the single best wide receiver three value you can draft this year. Uh, I look at him a lot like T. Higgins. You know, you know what you're going to get when it comes to Robbie Anderson, and maybe the range of outcomes isn't that wide. You know, maybe the ceiling for a top twelve outcome is not there, but the floor is going to be pretty damn good in an offense that should be pretty good. Should be a bad defense, which lends themselves to passing the ball a lot. And we just saw what Robbie Anderson did last year in this offense. First year under Joe Brady. First year as a Carolina Panther. Broke the fuck out, okay? If you're fading DJ Moore at his late third, early fourth round price, which uh, which I am, Anderson makes way too much sense in the seventh round. He had a zillion fucking targets last year. 138 to be exact. What who's counting, right? Started off scorching, scorching hot, okay? Looked like he was, he was not only going to remain the alpha for the entirety of the year, but transcend into an alpha fantasy option. He, he cooled off a little bit down the stretch, but he still finished really, really high in fantasy football. Slowed down, finished as a secure wide receiver, too. Uh, he set career high in targets, in reception, in receiving yards. Again, first year in a new offense, finally outside of Adam Gase. Brings over Sam Darnold, no longer on Adam Gase. Good things are coming to Carolina. Now, Robbie Anderson's usage last year was really, really interesting. Okay, He was used way differently than we have been accustomed to seeing Robbie Anderson used in an NFL offense. When he was in New York, he was used as like a deep threat. We were like, oh, he runs really fast and he can run really far and he can catch balls that are 50 yards in the air. Uh, last year in Carolina, he was not used that way. His yards per reception, his average depth of target, his dot were both career lows, which enabled him to be a staple of the PPR lineup. That's why he saw 138 targets last year. Now, when we look at the touchdowns, he scored three touchdowns. That's the only reason why he wasn't higher. He finished as the wide receiver 23, so a low-end wide receiver two with three touchdowns. You look at the chart. Had he scored four touchdowns, he's moving up to wide receiver 20. Had he scored five touchdowns, wide receiver 18. Six touchdowns, wide receiver 15. So yes, it's stupid to be like projecting, okay, now he's going to score twice as many touchdowns, but six touchdowns on 138 targets it is not a crazy, crazy possibility that I'm throwing out there to you, okay? I'm not being out of control, which I usually am. I'm not being ridiculous, which I usually am. This is not a case of that. Wide receiver 15 if he scores six touchdowns. He's basically like the anti-Adam Thielen at this point. There are two big changes in Carolina, as I said. Teddy Bridgewater, now at Denver. They bring in Sam Darnold. 
which can go one of two ways. Okay, so Teddy Bridgewater was more of a check down guy, which probably accounts for why uh, why he saw so many targets and why a lot of those targets were low a dot, low average depth of target. Right, they were not downfield. And you ask yourself, is that good or is that bad for Robbie Anderson? In PPR leagues, obviously, it's good. Um, but when we look at Sam Darnold coming over, what do we see? Sam Darnold's more of a like a fuck it kind of guy, right? He'll throw the ball down the field. He'll run it out of the pocket and chuck it 40 yards down the field, which I think does lend itself to success for, for Robbie Anderson. So maybe the volume comes down a little bit, but I think the targets he get, he's going to get this year with Darnold are probably going to be a little bit more high value in, uh, in, in, in the range of what we're seeing from him. Now, there's a possibility that Sam Darnold stinks, right? Uh, but we have we have seen the sample size of Robbie Anderson, and Sam Darnold playing together before, and the hookups that they've had on deep passes is beautiful. It's Sports Center top ten worthy. Okay, so I expect that to be the case. You look at him being a staple of this offense already, where Adam Gase just doesn't know how to fucking use anybody that's put in front of him. Joe Brady clearly does, and he knows how to use Robbie Anderson. The other thing to note, of course, is that they drafted Terrace Marshall. Now Terrace Marshall is a rookie coming out of LSU, extremely young, extremely extremely young, pretty raw. Terrace Marshall is probably going to take over as Robbie Anderson when Robbie Anderson departs after next year. He's, he's on a one-year contract right now. It's not on a one-year contract, but his contract expires after this year. Terrace Marshall and Robbie Anderson are very similar players. They're long. They're lean. You know, Spaghetti Anderson's a little bit leaner, as his nickname suggests, than Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall probably going to put a little muscle on the frame and be kind of an alpha build. But Terrace Marshall is a guy just like Robbie Anderson who played outside and then shifted over to the inside. So at LSU, he was like Justin Jefferson, where he played all outside one year. The next year, he moves over to the slot and has this mini breakout. Robbie Anderson was all outside in New York, starts to mix in a lot more in the slot in Carolina, and you see what type of player he becomes. So I look at Terrace Marshall, I look at Robbie Anderson as guys that Joe Brady sees as part of the offense, right? He takes his players and he says, okay, these are the roles that I see you playing. We're going to move the offense around for what you can do. And uh, you look at, listen, like you look at Terrace Marshall, he's a touchdown guy. His breakout in college was not some instrumental, you know, 1,400, 1,800 yard season like Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson or whatever. He scores a, t- a shitload of touchdowns, 13 touchdowns under Joe Brady. Um, so he's a touchdown guy. Robbie Anderson, clearly not a touchdown guy. So I look at Robbie Anderson and I'm like, he's such a staple of this offense that his floor is high enough that wide receiver 32. Again, you know what you're getting when you draft Robbie Anderson. I don't think he finishes as a wide receiver four. I think at worst he finishes as like a mid wide receiver three and he's got wide receiver two upside. So like T Higgins, you draft him, you set it, forget it in your wide receiver three flex spot and you're going to feel good. He'll pop off a few weeks where he connects with Darnold on a 50, 60 yard touchdown. And, uh, and you can't ask for much more than that in your flex spot. Okay, it's clear as day, as are these glasses from Felix Gray. FelixGray.com, link will be first thing in the description. If you guys are staring at screens all day like I am, I'm staring at a camera lens with the screen above it. I'm staring at a second monitor. I'm staring at my laptop. When I'm not staring at those things, I'm watching... I'm looking at my phone screen. Okay, so I'm looking at screens all day. By the end of the day, my eyes hurt a lot. Okay, and it's tough to sleep. Sometimes I get headaches and I can't work into the night because my eyes start to hurt. That was until I found Felix Gray and Felix Gray are blue light blocking glasses. Now, I know a lot of you boomers are probably like, oh, that's just like fake news. Blue light blocking glasses. Isn't that the same thing as like cryptocurrency? <laughs> no, crypto actually is real, too. All right. So fuck off. Ethereum. Great investment this is not financial advice. This is fucking financial advice. Invest in blue light glasses. If you have prescription, they have them too. Felix Gray has prescription where you can get blue light on them. Okay. So if you're working, a lot of you guys are going back into your office now where you actually have to stare at screens all day. They're stylish too. You can get pairs that look good on you. I know a lot of you guys end up commenting anytime we have a, a, a read with Felix Gray. What style is this? These are called the hopper. These are very basic, but they have a lot of wild outlandish um, styles on their website. So if you guys like to show yourselves, if you guys like to express yourselves through style, you can do so on Felix Gray. FelixGray.com will be linked down below. I'm telling you, there's like the single best investment on the uh, behind the business series where I where I'd interview people throughout the offseason uh, that I think were innovating or pushing the fantasy space forward over the last few years. You know, I've had guys like Andy Holloway and I have a Matt Kelly and I've had. Uh, you know, just a bunch of like really, really, really high end quality content creators in the space. One of the last questions I ask all of them are always like, what's the best purchase you've made under a hundred dollars? Now I have a dream scenario situation where someone's interviewing me and they ask, and you know what my fucking answer would be? God's honest truth. FB God's honest truth. Felix Gray glasses. Please go cop yourself a pair. You will not be disappointed. You will be extremely, extremely happy with your purchase. Really high quality. And I cannot emphasize this enough. If you're a student, if you're working in the office and you're staring at screens all day, this will alleviate the pressure on your beautiful, 
beautiful eyeball so you can continue watching me without pain. I mean, it's still going to be painful to watch me, but just not physically anymore, okay? Let's move over to wide receiver two. Antonio Brown, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Currently going off the board as wide receiver 46. 46, 103rd overall. If you're going to own pieces of this passing offense, honestly, I would take anyone in this passing offense. But right now, Tom Brady and Antonio Brown represent unbelievable value in drafts. Tom Brady's like the quarterback 11 off the board coming off a 4,640 yard, 40 touchdown season. Antonio Brown, here's the thing, bro. Like statistically, I'm not going to be surprised when Antonio Brown finishes like close to Godwin and or Evans. Uh, Their target share in the games that they played together last year were like a percentage off. Antonio Brown, if you actually look at just the regular season games, the seven regular season games that they played together, Antonio Brown led the three of them in targets. It's kind of been fucking insane because he came to the team halfway through the season. The playoffs, though, the playoffs were a different story. He kind of fell behind the two in the pecking order. But the seven games they played in the regular season together, bro, Antonio Brown led them in targets. Didn't lead them in receiving yards because he was not the deep threat kind of guy. And I think that comes as to uh, the way that they were using him last year was 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 actually like really crazy. So I, uh, I found the statistic per PFF. Antonio Brown led the NFL in screen targets per game, 2.4. He was second in yards per route run on screens just behind Debo Samuel, okay? So he came into the offense, and they already felt like, okay, we've got Chris Godwin in the slot. We've got Mike Evans as the deep threat and the red zone threat. How do we make sure that we get Antonio Brown utilized correctly? How do we get this Hall of Fame player and not just like hope that he has success? How about we force success upon him? And he's clearly like a very big part of this offense. And two years ago, when he joined the Pats for one fucking game, he was unbelievable with Tom Brady. Antonio Brown has not fallen off, okay? He had six touchdowns in the Bucks' final six games of the year, including that playoff run. So the four games in the playoffs, the two games leading up to the playoffs, six touchdowns in the six games. And you look at his success rate versus the different coverages last year. This is per... Uh, Matt Harmon's reception perception. So you guys have heard me talk about this resource about a zillion times in my videos over the last few weeks, but Matt Harmon's reception perception, which you can go cop on receptionperception.com, says Antonio Brown, he's not he's not fucking bike because he never left. When you look at his success rate, okay? Look at it versus man, 88th percentile success rate. Versus zone, 82nd percentile. Press coverage, 68th percentile. Don't worry about double teams because he's only getting it 3.3% of the time. 88th percent tile success rate versus man coverage a b is still a b and now he gets tom brady in the second year of this offense he's got a full off season he's not coming into the year eight weeks into the season i'm just saying bro they're clearly forcing success upon a b the fact that he led the nfl in screen targets per game two and a half screen targets per game that's insane that's insanity okay so i just want pieces of this tampa bay passing offense second in the league in scoring over 30 points per game they were scoring Despite it being like a carousel on their depth chart, A.B. comes in halfway through the season. Evans, Godwin, banged up. The running backs are banged up. They can't catch passes. Tom Brady fucking hates everybody. Then he loves everybody. Then he wins a Super Bowl. It was craziness in Tampa Bay, and they were still the most successful team in the NFL. Imagine what they're going to do as an encore this year, running a bike with the same team. Tom Brady went 4,640, and nobody is talking about it. That's his most passing touchdowns in a year since his 50 passing touchdown season back in 2007 what is wrong what is wrong with y'all i feel like i'm taking crazy pills holy shit draft the antonio brown in the 10th or 11th round of every underdog fantasy draft please 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 antonio brown we're moving from one ab to another ab amon ra saint brown out of usc he is on the detroit lions currently going off the board basically undrafted as the wide receiver 72 170th overall admittedly, I didn't love Amon Ross St. Brown as a prospect coming out. If he had landed pretty much anywhere else, I would not be touting him right now. He has fourth round draft capital, which I don't love because some people were, you know, putting him up in the second round or some shit like that. But the landing spot is pure perfection for a few reasons. Amon Ra does not excel outside. He broke out very young in college, very young as a slot receiver in USC. So the first two years he played at USC, he was purely a slot receiver and very good at that. They moved him to the outside this previous year, did not excel. I see a lot of Tyler Boyd when I watch Amon Ra St. Brown. Amon Ra is, is a more explosive version of Tyler Boyd based on the athletics when you look at it, right? The burst score, the agility score, very, very high. But he's kind of he's kind of a boring player, to be honest with you. You watch him, yes, he makes some big plays every now and then, but he's not really exciting. You don't you don't see him like bust off the screen. You're not too, too excited when you watch him. You're like, holy shit, that's my guy. But he does a lot of things really well. He has like a baseline of doing pretty much everything 
good, okay? Good at working in and out of zones. If he's using that role, and now you look at what the Detroit roster is, and it's juicy. This team has literally no passing options behind TJ Hawkinson at tight end and DeAndre Swift at running back. So the wide receiver roles are completely open. You look at the two wide receivers that they signed for free agency, through free agency, Rashad Perriman and who the fuck else? That, that's how bad they are. I forget who it was. Tyrell Williams. Rashad Perriman and Tyrell Williams. What are those guys? They're pure outside wide receivers, deep threat guys. The slot is completely, completely, completely opened. Okay? Do not fucking waste my time. Do not waste my I do not waste my Felix Gray led eyeballs into the comment section of Quintus Cephas bullshit. Do not. Do not touch my comment section with the words Quintus Cephas, okay? There is literally nothing behind these guys at wide receiver. So when I look at Amon Ra, like I think, you know, Devontae Smith, I think has a really good shot at leading the rookie class in overall targets this year. I think Amon Ra has a legit chance to finish top five in targets amongst these rookie wide receivers. I think he easily flirts with like 90 targets this year. Uh, and I can't emphasize this enough. The Lions are going to be bad. Their over under in a 17 game season is five wins. Five wins. That's what Vegas has them projected in the over-under. And the juice is on the under. The juice is on the under. The house is on the under. Which means they're going to be bad. And they're going to throw a ton. If the Lions throw as many times as they did last year, 581 times, which I think they'll probably throw even more, he just needs a 15% target share to hit 87 targets. Okay? So if all else stays the same, he sees a 15% target share, which is completely warranted. Because, listen, Hawkinson and Swift will probably be the leading targeted guys. And running backs and tight ends just don't, they don't hit the wide receiver type elite ceiling. So even if both of them get a ridiculous, if they combine for 40% of the targets, which is a really high number for those two positions, that leaves 60% of the targets still open. If you think Amon Ra is a starting slot wide receiver, can't get 15 of them, shut your mouth. That's what I'll say to it. So keep an eye on the slot battle, the slot camp battle here. Uh, if, if good reports keep coming out about Amon Ra St. Brown, I think he wins that spot easily, and I think he'll be a PPR stud that you can pay literally nothing for. So Amon Ra is another late-round guy that you need to be keeping an eye on. So I want to talk about some honorable mentions, some really quick, hella fast hitting dudes that belong on this list, but I'm not like super, super sold on them as much as I am on the other guys that I already mentioned. Darnell Mooney, he's going to be like everyone's favorite breakout candidate. Wide receiver 52, 119th overall. So you're getting him in like the double-digit rounds. He was a beast last year, or at least his fucking statistics would have said if any of the deep balls thrown his way were actually catchable. Uh, Mooney just burned defenders, and he fucking made them shrivel like a little piece of spinach on a pot, on a pan with the fucking flames turned all the way up. He had 23 deep targets last year. Four of them were catchable. Four of them were good targets that were catchable, and he caught all four of them. Now, with Justin Fields under center, supposedly, we'll see, Mooney should thrive as the wide receiver two in Chicago behind Allen Robinson. Darnell Mooney had the 36th most targets in the NFL last year and was top 10 in unrealized air yards, okay? So Mooney at wide receiver 52 is gorgeous. We love Mooney, uh, Mooney there. Some other guys, some other quick hitters that I will be taking shots on uh, in underdog and probably at the later rounds of redraft leagues. Michael Pittman, I mean, with uh, in Indy, of course, with Carson Wentz under center, I'd imagine this passing game works a little bit more through the receivers than the running backs like it did with Phillip Rivers. Uh, Hilton is kind of like a shell of himself. I was drafting a little bit of Hilton, not going to lie in underdog drafts, and then I read uh, Matt Harmon's reception perception of T.Y. Hilton, and Hilton is basically dead. He's basically dead at this point, and there's nothing else on this depth chart at wide receiver. I'll take a little bit of maybe some some Paris Campbell hype uh, going on there. Maybe I'll grab a share or two of him, but I like I like Hilton, or I like Pittman to kind of uh, evolve as the, the outside threat here in Indy, and um, yeah, hit, uh, Pittman I'll get some shares of. Nelson Aguilar, I just think, you know, he's the only downfield threat in, in New England right now. He's coming off of career year and also his replacement in Las Vegas, John Brown. You know, if uh, if Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards continue to be who they showed us that they were last year, John Brown could probably lead this wide receiver group in targets and do what Nelson Aguilar did last year. Lastly, Marvin Jones of Jacksonville. I have a lot of exposure to Marvin Jones in underdog drafts. Like Antonio Brown, I really doubt that Marvin Jones' statistics are that far off from DJ Chark and LaVisca Chanel. I'd, I'd probably be surprised if LaVisca Chanel outproduced Marvin Jones this year in yards. But that being said, I think they're all going to be uh, statistically around the same numbers, and Marvin Jones is going, you know, rounds and rounds cheaper than the other guys. Whew. Okay. That's all I got for my, uh, my later round wide receivers. Devontae Smith needs to be stacked with Jalen Hurts. Robbie Anderson, great value where you know what you're getting when you draft him. The upside's not crazy, but the floor is absolutely there for you. Antonio Brown of Tampa Bay was awesome last year. 
they're clearly pushing his involvement into the offense, and this offense is just going to be incredible next year. And clearly by his success rate versus man coverage, he's still here. Amon Ra, clear, clear path to a high number of targets in this offense with no real wide receivers. Subscribe to thy channel if you are new. We're doing everything fantasy football for the rest of the summer and into the season. Make sure you go check out felixgray.com. The link will be in the description. These are the hopper. These are the hopper, and they come in different colors. They come in different styles. felixgray.com. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and we will be bike tomorrow. Tomorrow. I don't know what the video is tomorrow, but you'll see me here. I love you. I'm out.